Hello and welcome back to this video series about multivariable calculus. Now, in today's part 8, we will talk about the so-called gradient. However, before we start, as always, I want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. And please don't forget, as a supporter, you can download the PDF version and the quiz of this video. Now, in the last video, we have discussed the general chain rule that holds for multivariable functions. And later in this video, we will see that this really helps understanding the gradient. However, first we should talk about the definition of the gradient. What we need to define it is a function f defined on Rn or an open subset in Rn, but with values in the real number line. And there we know, if the function is totally differentiable at a given point x tilde, then the Jacobian matrix at this point exists. Now, the notation we have for the Jacobian matrix is capital J with index F. And the position, the point x tilde, comes afterwards. Okay, and now we know, inside this matrix we find the partial derivatives. So the first entry is the partial derivative of f with respect to x1 at the point x tilde. Then in the second column we find the partial derivative of f with respect to x2. And then this continues until we have the last entry given by the partial derivative of f with respect to xn. In other words, what we find here is a matrix with only one row but n columns. So it's a very flat matrix because the values of the function are just one dimensional. And therefore, in this case, it's possible to interpret this matrix as a vector. In other words, what one can do is to transpose the whole matrix. Hence, we can see this now as a column vector in Rn. And indeed, this is what we call the gradient of f at the point x tilde. There are different notations for it and usually I will write gradient of f at x tilde. Another notation you often see uses a triangle called nabla. It's a little bit shorter in the notation but it stands for the same thing. Indeed, later we will talk more about this nabla symbol here. Here I first want to focus on this new thing, on this vector we call the gradient. And maybe here we start with a simple example. And now because I want to visualize it, the domain should be R2. But as before, you know, the values should live in R. Okay, so here we have two variables and we can write the function as f of x1 and x2. And then the resulting number should be given by x1 squared plus x2 squared. So you see, it's not so complicated and we know it's totally differentiable at every point in the domain. Now, the first thing I want to do now is to visualize the graph of the function again with Python. So, what you should recognize immediately is that it's a parabola in 3D. And moreover, if we look at our contour lines, so if we look from above, we see circles. Okay, so this is something we can keep in mind. And now the question is, can we calculate the gradient of f? Now to make it simpler, I call the point x tilde we put in also x1, x2. So for calculating it, we know we need to calculate partial derivatives, namely two of them. And now the first one is simply 2x1. And in the same way, we see the second one is 2x2. So you should see, for each point in the plane, we get out a two-dimensional vector. Hence, this is something we can also visualize in the domain in the plane R2. And here, what we can do is that we pick one point with two coordinates, x1 and x2. And then we visualize the gradient, the vector, as an arrow and put it on the point. So in this case here, the arrow might look like this. And then you should see, we can do this here for every point in the plane. Hence, what we get is a whole field of vectors. So in our case here, it's not so hard to see, the arrows always point outwards. 
However, maybe this is also something we should visualize in Python. So maybe we just do a quick sketch for the directions of the arrows we have here. So they point outwards and what you should see is that they are smaller in the region around the origin and get longer when we go outside. Okay, maybe that's good enough for a sketch. Now I want to apply the chain rule. Now of course, there I have to explain what I mean by that. So there I still want to use my function f here, but also a curve in the plane. This means I have a map I call gamma that goes from R into R2. More precisely, the real number line gets mapped into the plane by gamma. Therefore, the image of gamma could look like this. And then in the next step, we apply the function f, so we have a composition of two maps. Hence, by using our function f from above and a suitable curve gamma, we can check how the chain rule works in calculations. Indeed, for gamma, I want to choose a map that describes a circle in the plane. Moreover, I will use t for the variable of this map. And now, for example, a circle can be described by using cosine of t and sine of t. Okay, now we have two possibilities to calculate the derivative of the composition of the two maps. First, we could put them together and then we could calculate the derivative as a normal one-dimensional one. However, of course, that is not what we want to do here. Here we want to apply the multivariable chain rule from the last video. And it tells us that the Jacobian matrix of f after gamma is given by the multiplication of two Jacobian matrices. Namely, we have the Jacobian matrix of f at the position gamma of t, times the Jacobian matrix of gamma at the position t. Okay, and now both matrices here we can easily calculate. First, the Jacobian matrix of f would have the partial derivative of f with respect to x1 in the first component. And in the second column we find the partial derivative with respect to x2. So this is the whole Jacobian matrix of f, however, this is not correct because we have to put in the point gamma of t. This means here in the first component, instead of x1, we would have the cosine of t. And in the same sense, here in the second component, we have sine of t. Okay, and now this Jacobian matrix is correct. And then in the next step, it should be multiplied by a matrix with two rows, but only one column. In other words, we just have to form the derivative of this vector, so of the first component, which is the cosine, and the second component, which is the sine. Okay, and there you should know this is minus sine of t and cosine of t. Hence, now the only thing that remains is that we do the matrix multiplication, which should give us a 1 times 1 matrix. And then you should also easily see that the result of this entry is 0. In other words, no matter which point t we choose here, the Jacobian matrix of the composition is always the zero matrix. Indeed, this is an interesting result and it has some geometric meaning. And in order to see this, let's rewrite this chain rule again. Namely, let's try using the gradient in the calculation. Of course, you know the gradient of f is simply the transpose of this Jacobian matrix here. So simply this vector here, but as a column vector. And then you should recognize the calculation we do here is simply the standard inner product in R2. In other words, we can rewrite this matrix product as an inner product. So we have the inner product of the gradient of f at the position gamma of t with the Jacobian matrix of gamma of t. But of course this one we can simply write as gamma prime of t. Therefore in the end you see we just multiply two vectors in the inner product. And as always I use the pointed brackets to denote the inner product. However it's simply the standard inner product in R2 you often also see denoted with a dot. However now the important thing is that in this case in this example this inner product gives us zero. 
In fact, this is something you should know from linear algebra. If the inner product is zero, we have orthogonality. In other words, here, both vectors are perpendicular. Indeed, this is a great thing of the gradient. It gives us immediately a geometric view. However, what this exactly means, I will explain in the next video. So by having this cliffhanger, I really hope that I see you in the next video. So have a nice day and bye.